Welcome to another episode of Driving to the Rest with your favorite hosts, Larry and Inelia. Inelia. <laughs> Reviewing 2024. Nothing literally remains the same. The mere act of looking at it changes it. The mere act of existing changes it. I don't look into the future. I do not reveal the future. When I look at 2024, yep. what I look at and I reveal is what's planned by us. Oh. What's planned as a human collective. What are we planning for the next year? That's what I look at and reveal. What are the plans? What are the and what, plans? Yes. And what are the things to look out for, what to watch and see that indicate that the plans are coming to fruition. to fruition, yes. In other words, whatever you have They're planned is actually out. being carried out mm -hmm, and not mm -hmm. been like, ah, never mind that plan. Yes. Okay. Sometimes they fl fall flat on their faces, the plans. Sometimes they get a lot bigger than we expected. Um, All the things, yes. That's what I do. All the things. Okay. Because you can't. You can't look at the actual future because there's so many possibilities and so many timeline, you know, that happen or one aspect, one decision that you make will change your entire future. So, and knowing about the future, I mean, the most it. probable future. Yeah. And when I do the cards, say for a person, yeah, uh, or I look, I, we do a session for a person. We look at their probable future, depending on what they're doing right now. And when they change that, of course, or you can, if they say, "I don't like that future," can you tell me how to change it? Then you start looking with the cards or whatever's. To see well, what can they do to change it so that they get the result that they actually want for that future. But looking at 2024 and before 2023, 2022, etc., those are actually looking at the plans that we have as a human collective for the next year. I'm very different so things. So glad you cleared that up. So different things. Very, very different things. And I cleared it up again. In December 2023, I released the Inelia Looking at 2024 live call and video. The first part was self-censored to fit with the requirements of non-disclosure at YouTube and other social media. The second part is behind a paywall, hosted at our own server so that it cannot be taken down. And FYY, the, the paywall is just eight bucks a month. Eight bucks. <laughs> Thank you. It's like a nothingness, but it's enough to keep it for the people who actually want to see it. And um, when we did the actual call, yeah, I can't remember how much it was. I think it was something like that to, to join it. In this article and the podcast that accompanies it, I will skim over the information I revealed in the December 23 at a public level. And during the deep dive in the second part of this podcast, we can go into the uncensored items and information that we did behind the wall. My, year, my look at the year ahead is also from two perspectives. One is what the dark workers are up to on Earth, and the other is what the light workers are up to, or should be up to, during the same time frame. And I thought we could have a little bit of commentary around that one. <laughs> what should we be up to? Because, oh my gosh, it's like pulling teeth, man. And that's part of it. You know, the other thing about light workers is that they hate to be told what to do, right? And you should, have, it. <laughs> you should have seen the amount of reaction that I got in 2019, which was the first time I put out a video telling white workers what to do. I know. It was like, oh, my gosh, it was insane. <laughs> I'm a sovereign being. I'll decide what I'll do. Yes. yes. Like, well, you better well, get your get patootie busy doing then. it then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and a lot of it was, you know, what to do. So, so in 2019, you um, you put out a call, mm -hmm. right? Yes. For the light workers to create their own structures for their own support networks for their own schools and jobs and et cetera, et cetera, All right? The things, yes. And um, it was amazingly prescient because in a, v a few short months. Practically the entire planet shut down. <laughs> yeah, and you needed and those. And you needed those things. Uh, mostly, you know, find your tribe, find your support <laughs> network, find your thing, set up yes. your food, set up your water, set up your job, set up your income, set up your house, set up your education, education system, all of those things. So that why you don't get swept up in the plans of the, um, I guess we would say the, the human collective. No. 
We planned it too. We're participants, right? Right, right. The split is not one sided. It's two sided. Either, either way. There's two sides to the split. Either way. There. The, the uh, call to action, you know? Oh, yeah. So yes. when I first put that call to action, a lot of the action was don't tell me what don't to tell do. Don't tell me what to do. I'm <laughs> this unsubscribing from your channel. <laughs> um, it was quite which is like whatever <laughs> and the but the action of actually setting Creating up new this. educational systems and new job <clears throat> systems and new educate and communication systems and work and all the things did happen after like a year or so after <laughs> the whole crisis started so then it made a lot more sense. some people actually did start you know and they were very thankful. So, so, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. it's like... I'm not saying everybody, but no. you, you know what I'm saying in general. Okay, during the public section, I gave some bookmarks to look at, to watch out for for 2024. These bookmarks indicate the split is happening according to the larger human collective scheduled plan. During the private session, there are more bookmarks that I can't talk about publicly. Not because I don't want to, because I do, but because the ears don't, don't want to hear it, don't allow it in their networks. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, I, got, I got another strike yesterday on YouTube. Did you? No, yeah. honey. Why do you keep trying to tell people who don't want to hear stuff, stuff? Well, it was from 2017 uh, or something. You should have known way back then. I that, right know. up here. I want to see yeah. that up here right now. Yeah. Then. So that's why during the public session... Um, I gave some information and then on the private session parts of it, I gave another one. We're still doing that with our podcast, right? On the second part, we are able to deep dive and not censor ourselves. We can't talk about it. it like, okay, shall we go to the public everything. bookmarks? If you want, yes. Let's go some Let's of the public at, bookmarks. Yes. These so are, let's see which ones have already come, come to be. Come to be to okay. see what plans are actually on schedule. So that the public bookmarks were Bill Gates comes back in the news. I haven't seen that happen, but I don't really watch the news. It's tough so he to may have been... measure that one, but I've seen him pop in. Mm -hmm. Obama makes it a comeback in the news. Mm, several times. He made a whole yeah. movie. Oh, that's true. He made a movie. A yes. delightful tale yes. about Tesla. Was that this year? Tesla Buck Lock Yards. Yeah. I What's think it? so. I don't remember. Mm. People in monkey suits. I haven't seen that one. Although I, I, one person did say that they started seeing it. There was a couple of really extremely violent movies with people in com, uh, monkey um, costumes. Mm. Link between E.T. and religion. Return of the Mother, the Devil. That oh, yes. has been huge. Actually, it's quite surprising how big that one is. Apple hints at their latest technology being ET in nature with words such as out of this world or similar ideas. Now, this might have, this is a little bit, to me, a little bit confusing. They haven't done that yet, but they did do Apple hints at their latest technology being all AI. And I watched a couple of their ads for their new technology that came out this year. And it's almost like it's technology that can't be developed by anyone else, mm. right? So not exactly, they're not exactly saying E.T., but it's very E.T. looking. <laughs> I remember one of the patents they had filed for the iPad mm -hmm. had E.T.'s fingers as the fingers that they were using to demonstrate the touching the pad. Yeah. The finger was E.T. Oh, really? e. finger, yeah. When did that happen? Oh, when the iPad first came out. Oh, it's like <clears> a few years ago? iPad came out a lot, more, a lot more than a few years ago. Okay. Another one was exhaustion and being tired. Drama, fatigue, overwhelm. Mm, yeah. And then I see that. AI used to create a split between fear of AI and AI is the best thing ever. That's like a Trump. Trump's the worst thing, best thing, or Biden is the best thing, worst thing, or... Yes, a split between... A split between yeah. people in a very strongly held position. Yes, very strongly held position. So I far, what I have personally seen on the above lists are link between ETs and religion, for sure. Exhaustion and being tired, drama fatigue. And the AI used to sp the, the split between the fear of AI and the AI is the best thing ever. I've seen those. Okay, let's go to the link between ETs and religion. Okay. That has been coming up in 
Fast and Furious have also been surprised by how prolific this particular bookmark has been in the first half of this year. The top podcasters are covering it, large TV networks and live streams, and popular social media such as YouTube and TikTok. So, let me just put that to a second, because okay. I'm very interested in this. So, this ETs and religion. When? I mean... How, when, what, you know? Even the Vatican's got their coming out about it. Well, that they started that last year. They just had another one just recently. Yeah. Uh, big, big to do about it. I didn't oh, really pay big attention. To do because the last time it wasn't that big. You know what else I have Which found interesting? Yes. I, I think I talk about, let me see if I talk about this here or not. Yeah, I think I'll, we'll talk about it now anyways. Okay. So... What I f find interesting is that a lot of the podcasters that we listen to have been going religion. They've been born again. They've been getting converted. Yeah. 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 And they bring a lot of people in who say, um, I was, what was it, people that are not religious? Don't believe uh, really. Agnostic or atheistic. Atheist, yeah. I used to be an atheist, but after studying after the Bible... The yeah. Or studying the Quran or studying Buddhism. Now I know there's a God and that God is the creator. And the only good thing about the planet is Jesus. Whatever. You know, those type of lines. Started to come in. Yeah. And it's shocking to me. It's like. <laughs> me too. What? And it's usually like linked with it is. I haven't heard one of those without an ET equation involved in it. Whether it is in ancient times or it is in the Bible or it is now and the, the angels and gods and whatnot. Yeah, if you look in the alien ET UFO current, you will almost uniformly find in the large names some form of religion attached to it. Like communion, it was used to be gray aliens in a spaceship and now it's uh oh the book malevolent communion. yeah malevolent okay. i thought you said communion is there's no, something communion, that Catholics do. no you don't want to <laughs> okay talk. the book communion the book communion used to whitley be an striber e. whitley striber yes it was yes. et and it's evolved now it's a uh, religious book a what's the malevolent is the bad one right yes a malevolent non-physical entity mm. Like a demon, basically. Mm, yes. Yeah. Uh, and um, the uh, even the UF, the Air Force group, whatever you know, it's like they're the angels or they're the demons. They're not yes. like uh, they've always been here, and they're not from a different planet. They're they're here and they're interdimensional, mm -hmm. and they've always been guiding us. They've been <laughs> guiding us along, or at their hands, or whatever you know. Yes, interesting stuff. Yeah. Anyways, I Anyways. we would have a little marker there too for the marker. A I, marker for I the was, marker. I was, I was so excited when the UFO stuff started coming in and now I'm like, you had to go there with it? Come on. <laughs> You're ruining a perfectly good story. <clears throat> yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. They're ruining a perfectly good story. <laughs> yes, they are. Okay. Exhaustion and drama fatigue. I felt personally, yes, I did feel that one. And have had reports and heard comments among people I know, people in the street and some media outlets. It is not a mild passing thing. It can be life changing in that people will make huge decisions while feeling this way, when in fact it's not a personal crisis at all, but an artificial one. And I was looking at, how does it come about? Tell me. Well, I, you know, it's like, I'm very... Like, I have my antennas out all the time with regards to frequencies, energies, and things. And I was glad that I hadn't been affected by it, although I had heard other people saying that they were going into exhaustion, they couldn't get up in the morning, and, you know... I really don't know how many times I found out the world's going to end next week. That too, right? So, in other words... Every other like thing is going to end it. The The... Um, solar eclipse was going to oh, end the it. Oh, the eclipse was going to end it. We had the lights. northern lights. That would definitely that was gonna gonna end, end it. it. Uh, a solar flare was going to end it. Another one. Different one. Different one. Uh, different one. Some different sort one. of earthquake. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff that but was going to end the world. I mean, I've been hearing about them since 2012. 
<laughs> That's true. <laughs> the end of the world fatigue. Well, it did come into my life. I, I was shocked, actually. Like, whoa, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is powerful. <laughs> yes. And it came in very interestingly through listening to a podcast. And I think it was wrapped in certain energies, that podcast. And then I made a connection, like an energetic focus. I focused, I looked at this guy um, and when I had a like imaginings of having in interviewing him so we would connect and interview with him right and as soon as I did that it's almost like my whole frequency went to poopoo land I remember yeah I, it was really bad and I was like, this is really curious. Why is my frequency so low? And I couldn't even get out of bed. It was like a deep depression type energy. And I was like, this is really odd. What, where did it come from? I started looking at following the energy lines, you know, and then I saw it and I saw his face. Oh, you little. Little stinker bugger. Stinker bugger. <laughs> <laughs> so going, Shh, no, we're not going to interview. Go away. <laughs> go. instantly it was gone yeah like it didn't wait a second it was instantly it was gone and i was perfectly fine again and that type of thing people are doing connecting and with individuals or movies or shows or um interactions and co-creations that are in poopy land and really, you, you have to pull your energies out of there. You have to, you know, connect at the light only. Right. Don't go. You don't have to connect light dark. You can just connect with the light, man. Yes. Yes. All righty then. The conflicting AI, AI equation. equation. Is it good? Is it bad? has also been very interesting to me. From AI entering our lives on most, if not all, the search engines on the internet, to the new Apple devices heavily implementing and supporting AI in their new generation of devices, and an infamous ad that showed the destruction of human art and forums to be replaced with one of their devices, to movies that contain both the destructive and scary AI, as well as the friendly, supportive AI. AI, man. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. So I mm. do have something to say. I hope you do. Right. Um, technology, including AI and us as human beings, are inevitable. Human beings process, human beings create, they use tools. And they evolve those tools. AI and humans are a match made in heaven or hell. <laughs> when you have like dark, you're going to have one in hell and one in heaven, right? But when you don't have the dark, it is part of who we and what we are. We can't help it. It's going to happen. It's, it's just done. It's you cannot avoid it. And therefore, you have to use your discernment in this time when the drivers of that technology are playing dark games. You have to use your discernment to make sure that you use things in a way that don't, doesn't feed that darkness. Yeah. And one of the ways in which you might be feeding that darkness, and a lot of people that I know are, is to have the, the split pro against the war. All technology is evil. We have to destroy it all. And the other one is people who, uh, all technology is good. We have to implement it in everything, right? So both of those, when you see that type of What's it called? The opposites? Yep. It's like, eh, question that. Right. 
So, and it's, it's <clears throat> everyone because, like I said, technology and humans go hand in hand. I remember many years ago, um, I said, I can't remember who I was talking with. I think it might have been Daniela. And I said, well, I don't eat processed food. And she said, mom, you do. And I says, what do you mean? Says, when you eat a carrot, do you cut it? Do you cook it? I says, yeah. Says, well, the moment that you cut the carrot, that carrot has been processed. Facts. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so that is part of our human nature. We process stuff, right? We, we take things and we process them. And then we ingest them <laughs> or use them or whatever. Yeah. So, for example, um, like I, I think it was actually about 25 years ago. Uh, when I had a Windows computer and it came with a firewall system. I think it was McAfee. And when it was trying, when I was installing my my system, because I used to do a lot of network administration and stuff, I looked at that program and I saw that it was bad. It was a bad program, like evil. It was there to disrupt. I said I I refused to put it on, and people got very scared, and they said, "Well, how do you make sure that?" your emails don't get corrupted? How do you make sure that your computer doesn't get infected? And I says, well, I'm going to be diligent. I'm not going to open emails that I suspect are sending you to a place that is going to infect you with these bugs. And I'm going to delete, when, when I deleted that program, I think in my system, we only got once, once we got the system hacked and broken down. And it was one of my kids had opened a pornographic site, called like a link, you know, to watch a, a nasty video. And he wiped out the entire, his laptop, he wiped out his entire laptop. And I looked at it and I recognized the blue screen that was up, right? And what it was selling. And I looked at, it was actually his girlfriend. And I looked at her and I said, uh, all right, so um, you were watching a video, some sort of really perverse pornographic thing that you wanted to look at. You followed the link, didn't you? And she went, be red. red. <laughs> <clears throat> says, okay, so here's the thing. Our computers in this house, they don't have firewalls because those bring in uh, malware. But you had to be very diligent. And this is the type of things that you cannot do. So I gave her the, the list again, which I had done when she started using the laptop. And she said, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> so I wiped the system, cleaned it up, reset everything, it reinstalled Windows, do all the things. And I gave her, I remember, a site that you could scan it with and that's one of the reasons I never download emails to my devices, you know, to my computers. I always use uh, the website email programs. Mm -hmm. I never download them. So it's like there was light dark being injected there right from back when. But I, when I looked at it and I saw it, I was able to navigate it. I mean, this whole story is about navigating technology so that it doesn't pull you through into the darkness yeah and it's not subtle right Th these things are not subtle it's not like you have to really look to see these things they're clear and uh, for example recently i started a brand new account on x twitter <laughs> for my books my novels not my, all my books, just the novels. So I started a brand new one. It has no data about me. I haven't liked anything. I haven't watched anything. It's just brand new. No data behind it. 
And every time I open it to post something, it is so dark and perverted. Shocking, right? It's shocking. So the 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 like the base of that channel is so bad. It's very interesting to me. I mean, a lot of this <clears throat> stuff was sexually perverted. And when when uh, we've we had to look for platforms that will host us without cutting off the the information that we want to give censored uh, information that they won't delete our account because we're talking about those topics they also have those items in them perversions perversions yeah. and things so you cut it and it reminds you know what it reminds me of do you remember those people that had a channel like well many 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 years ago let's say this many 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 years ago google um wanted me to put in ads in my website okay now google doesn't call anybody anymore probably but and i don't know if it called people then but i got a phone call from google selling me ads on my website they wanted me to put ads on my website and i said no i'm never gonna put ads in my website i had tried it i tried ads in a couple of sites and then i noticed that things got really bad very quickly in the ads if if i opened my website it was all beautiful but if another person opened my website and they showed me their screenshot it was nasty stuff, really nasty as they were repulsive ads. Like pulling off toenail stuff. Yes. Was like, well, who's warts, advertising that? Warts, toenails. Why would you advertise that? You know, all this nasty stuff. So it's like, okay, I know where this is going, right? Yeah. And then I said, no, I'm not going to, right? So I, I didn't do it. And also... Um, when I saw, like years later, I saw these other people's website and it, that was all coming up. And then they put up uh, a clip of an interview with me. And then they took it down. Right. And I called them and I said, hey, dude, like, how come you pulled down the, the interview you had with me that was on your website? And they said, well, we get over a million dollars from Google ads. And they called us and told us that their advertisers weren't happy about that interview. So we had to pull it down. But it's still there. It's just that it's behind the paywall. It's like <clears throat> the, what you see is very much filtered, right? Mm. And technology can go that way. But you can also bypass it and do other things. Right. And... If it wasn't for the technology advancements that we've had in the last 20 years, we wouldn't be recording this video. I mean, this podcast, we wouldn't be have this capacity. All the technology we have here is used to be in the most advanced sound studios or video film studios on the planet. Like the computational power. And not everything. very long ago in the most advanced science fiction novels right. on the planet. Right. So use it well. Yeah. So anyways, the AI being good or being bad, I know it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually um, put, uh, putting together a, um, a post. So I had this app. I have this app that I pay for where I can put in uh, words and my pictures and edit them, make them cool and all these type of things really quickly and fast and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly it came up with, hey, we've got this new feature. You can uh, talk to, put in a sentence and we'll come up with a picture. I know what that is. You know, it's like the AI pictures, right? Mm -hmm. The generated graphics. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so, yes, yeah, everywhere. All the search engines have it. Wow. Yeah. All the websites, all the things, AI, censoring everything. So, yeah, use it with care. Okay, these are strong, powerful, and impinging your attention, even if you're not tuned into the public opinion outlets. 
The reason I released the looking at 2024 video and I'm looking at what is happening so far is because by becoming aware of the larger picture, the larger stage, we're able to make conscious decisions about our lives. When we know what is actually happening, we're no longer leaves blowing in the wind. That is for my, that's it for my article. We will discuss this further on our podcast at drivingtotherest.com and we will go full on deep dive and uncensored with our expert panelists on the token $8 a month paid wall for our podcast. Okay. See you there. See you there. Be there or be somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Love you, honey. Love you. There was a a, ro- uh, a machine sent to Mars, I think it was, by the Chinese or the moon. I can't remember. Moon, back side of the yeah. moon. And um, when we were looking at it, it was all <coughs> CGI, you know, it's computer-generated imagery. That was quite hilarious. And they were looking at it all excited. And it was like, that is all... I saw it and thought, oh, it's all pretend. I said to him, they're not even sending anything. They just just watch and then afterwards they're going to say, oh, it failed, it crashed or whatever. And he said, no, 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 they're just using the CGI for because the, the connection got lost. Yeah. And then when the CGI lands, everybody cheers and everything. I'm like, yeah, no, right. And then, sure enough, like a day or a few hours later, they said, oh, it crashed and we lost connection. We don't know what happened.